Right, the purpose of this video is to show you how to set up Backendless to work with your application. And that's basically looking at the libraries of Backendless and how we can, what we need to do in order to add them into our project. Right, so the first things first, go into the Backendless website and that's develop.backendless.com. Log into the account or to your account and let's create a new app. So if you get to the screen for your very first app like we've done in the previous video, you're going to right click or just click on uh, creating a new application and let's call this application contacts 2019. I'm going to call mine video. But you can just use, uh, leave yours as contacts or contacts 2019 or whatever you want. And let's create. Now the, it can't be open spaces so I'm going to use an underscore there and say create. Right, so now we have a brand new Android application or an application online uh, which we can link to iOS, Android and so forth. And obviously we're going to look at the Android part of it. Right, so another thing I want to point you to that you can open so long is this back in this training website. So you're going to go into this website and to get to this you're going to type bit.ly forward slash back endless all lowercase 2019. It will take you to this page and I'm going to refer to these links as we go along. So please make sure that you open up this website. You can also look, look at the link at the top. This is just a shorter link but you can also use that one at the top. Right, so the first part is we're going to set up back endless for your Android application. So I want you to open up this document and it looks like this. Uh, it says in your application class you need to do this, in your Gradle build this should be done and in your manifest. So just download this document so that we can open it up in Word and then see what we need to do in order to set up back endless. Right, so I just open up mine in Google Docs also so you can also do that and I've got an open document in front of me from which I can copy and paste into Android Studio. So just make sure you open up this document. So where did I get that? Setting up back in this for your Android application. So it's this document. Just open it up. So what I'm going to do now is to go to Android Studio and I created a new application called Contacts 2019 Video. Right, so this is my application. I've done nothing so far. And now we need to set up back endless to work with this project. So the very first thing we'll need to go and do is to go into our Gradle scripts and go to your build.gradle module app. So into this build.gradle file right at the bottom is where we want to have our first few lines copied and pasted. So let's just open up this document again and you'll see in your Gradle build file you need to copy all of this. Copy it, go to Android Studio and you're going to paste that at the bottom. 100% just click on sync now. This will sync then the libraries into your application and we can start using it. So now while it's syncing, I see mine is done now, you'll see that there's a version number 524. So if you hover over this uh, when it's highlighted in orange then it will tell you there's a newer version available. So if you hover over it it will tell you that the new version is available and you can just choose the newest version. So currently the newest version is 524. Right so if everything is fine then we know that back end this was set up correctly and we can test it now to see if we can get hold of those libraries. So the next step will then be to go and create the application class. So I'm going to go into my package there where my main activity is at, I'm going to right click and we're going to say new Java class. And let's call this Java class, uh, I'm going to call it contacts application. And this will be my application class for this contacts application. So we're going to say extends application to make it our application class. And then as part of this application class, we need to generate the onCreate method. And we can remove all of those comments. So this is my onCreate method. Just going to remove those imports also at the top. Now let's go back to the documentation again. So you'll see there in my application class we need to have this. So I'm going to copy those first three lines. Go back to Android Studio and I'm going to paste it. Right, so it's above your onCreate but still inside of your application class. So we've got, we're going to work with an application ID, an API key and a server URL. The server URL you're going to keep as it is. But for every application your API key and your application ID should change. Right, let's go to the next step then. Go back to that document and you'll see this part 
should go into your OnCreate. So let's go back to Android Studio. In your OnCreate, you paste these lines. Now Alt Enter on back in this to say import class. And if this worked now, you know that your Gradle script was synced successfully and you have these libraries included. If this part is still giving you a problem, then go back to your build.gradle and make sure those libraries get synced. Okay, so at this stage, if you can see this working, your back end list libraries is working fine and we just need to set it up correctly. Okay, so, so far uh, we've set up those three variables that we are using in here as the server URL, the application ID and the key. And we come, we'll come back to this to set the, the ID and the key. Now for this to actually become my application class, we need to go into the manifest file and add a name property there and then it will pick up your contacts application automatic. Now another thing also in that document you'll see that we have in the manifest you need to have this user's permission. So you can copy that permission, go back to Android Studio and add that permission at the top. So just above your application tag but still inside of your manifest tag. So we're saying basically we're going to use this permission called internet. Now obviously because we're saving data online this permission should be for the internet. Right, so my idea behind this whole application is to create a fully fledged application where we can do a login screen, we can do uh, the users resetting the password, uh, registering new users, and then uh, working with some data online. So I'm going to be building this whole uh, contacts application from scratch. So the part that we're busy with now is just setting up back endless to work with your application. Right, so so far this contacts application will be then this class will be the first thing that runs in your application or when your application starts and this is why we need to do this in here so we're setting the url and initializing the app with authenticating the application id as well as the api key so then throughout my application i've got a connection to backenders and i can start working with the database whenever i want and in any activity Right, so the last thing for this video then is to go and get this application ID and the API key. So in order to get the application ID, we're going to go and go to the website and you've logged into the website already. So it's it's this website where we've got our video created or our context 28, 2019 video application created. Now you can see there's the application ID. So if, you, if you're not on the screen, just click on the home button there. The home button takes you back to the screen. And there, there you can see your application ID. So this ID is unique for every application. And then your, your Android API key also unique, but you are able to regenerate this key. So just copy your Android or your application ID there. Go back to Android Studio and then replace it there. So that will be then my application ID. Please don't work with my application ID or type it from here. Uh, yours won't, won't change, obviously, if you're using my code. So take it from your website. So we're going to go to the API key next. So let's look at the API key. That will be the Android API key. Copy it. Go back into your application and change your key there to be, or your API key to be that specific key of your application, not mine. Right, so we've got the application ID, we've got the API key, and we've got a server URL. Right, so this is then setting up your application. And for us to just quickly test it, I'm going to create a class there. And let's call this contacts, or contact, and say OK. And I want to use this class, just add a two fields there. I'm going to have a private string name uh, for the contact, and let's say a private string surname. And we'll come back and change this later. So for this contact, I'm going to generate the just getters and setters, the name and the surname, and done. So in back endless, when we're creating classes, uh, the class becomes a table and every uh, field that you have here becomes a column. So if we just quickly have a look at setting this up and if back endless is actually working or not, we'll just see to quickly create a contact table online. So let's go to the main activity. And we'll just go and say back endless dot data dot of and we're going to refer to the contact dot class 
and we're going to say dot save and i just want to save one entity here so you'll see uh, you remember entities that we talked about in the room api uh, we can talk about entities here also but you can see that my contact class doesn't need to have all those at entity and stuff like that we can just directly use it so i'm going to use the save method and you always see there's two type of methods when we work with backendless and uh, one is for java without the async callback and one is for android with the async callback so we're always going to use the async callback so what i'm going to save is a new contact object so let's create a new contact so i'm going to say contact contact equals new contact And to that contact, we're going to set the name. And the name will be, let's say, John Rambo or John. And then for the contact, we will set the surname. And the surname will be, let's say, Rambo. Right, so that's a new contact. And now I'm just passing in that contact object there. Second argument, new async callback. And it creates the whole thing for me. So I'm going to talk about this part a bit later. So this is just now to see if some if uh, the backend list is set up correctly, and we can actually save data online. So I'm going to run this quickly. Right. So while we're waiting for this to run, you will see that if you go online now and you go to your data part there on the left hand side, you will see that we have absolutely no tables there, no tables there. But as soon as this app is running. We will be creating one table called contact and we will be placing one one item into that contact table so there it runs so now in the background depending on your internet connection should take about one or two seconds before you can refresh here and see your contact table is there if i click on it it says john rambo that's the name column and the surname column so we'll come back to this to see how you can create your own tables and stuff like that. But uh, for now, you can see that we are connected to the correct project online. We are creating, uh, in this case, a contact table inside of the contact table. I've added John Rambo. Now, if I want to do this again, I can add, let's add Chuck Norris there as well. So I'll change this to Chuck Norris. Run it quickly again. And as soon as it runs, we should be able to see that new contact added to the database. So let's just wait a bit for it. So when you're saving a new object online and uh, that table doesn't exist, it will create the table for you. If you save and the table exists, it will just add another one to it. So there you can see Chuck and Norris been added to the table online. Right, so this is setting up your application for Backendless. We'll come back in the next video and start creating our contacts application. See you in the next one.